Peace and blessing to you all. I want to welcome you to another spiritual vitamin on this day, November the 19th, 2023. This is the day that the Lord has made, so let us rejoice in it. Rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. Again, I say rejoice. You got another chance at life. You got another chance to make things right between you and God and between someone that you may have offended. You got another chance. So just lift your hands up and give God a hallelujah praise that is worthy of his blessings because you have an expectancy of God. You expect him to hear your prayers and to answer your prayers, right? Well, God has an expectancy of you. He expects you to praise and worship him all the days of your life. So don't forget every single day when you get up in the morning, you give God a hallelujah praise. That should be the first thing that you do. As God pours into you, you should be continuing to pour back into others. But you can't do that unless you allow God, God to pour into you. And the other part to that is before you allow the world to pour into you, allow God to pour into you. Because when God pours into you, you will understand what the treasures of your heart are. And that is the name of my spiritual vitamin today, the treasures of your heart, the treasures of your heart. The heart represents the hidden and most intimate parts of ourselves and the very source of our lives. It's what a person values and loves the most in life. That's what will influence you the most in your life. And I wanna give you four key points here that I feel that is going to help you to focus on the things that are most valuable and precious to you and for you. And they should be most valuable and precious to you. And the first being God, the triune spirit of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit the great and mighty I am, Yahshua in the Holy Spirit. Where lies the treasures of your heart? It should rely in God first. You should put God before anything and everything in your life. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things will be added unto you. So put God first. By putting God first, you are allowing him to permeate into the very core and essence of your being, from your head to your toe, bone, and marrow. He is the propitiation and the conciliator of all things. So allow God to just permeate, to come into your life, to come into your heart, mind, body, and soul, so that the blessings of the Lord will resonate into your life. It will be there. It will, it will, it will just take charge. The Holy Spirit will take charge and speak to you and through you in matters of of, of different situations that you may find yourself in and you will prosper physically, mentally, and spiritually. You will prosper financially. God will bless you if you put him first. That is the most valuable and most precious gift that you can possibly have. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit is one. So by you putting God first, you are putting Yahshua, Jesus Christ. You are putting him first. You are putting the Holy Spirit first. God gave his one and only begotten Son that whoever would believe in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. That's a precious, precious gift. God dwells in you. He lives in you. He says, hereby know that we live in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. The Holy Spirit is a precious gift. He lives in you. God gave him to us. That is the first focus point that I feel that you should be focused on in finding your treasure. You will find your treasure in the triune spirit of God. And the second most important, for most of us, if you're like me, if you're anything like me, what was important to me after I found the Lord, I said, I got to find a wife. He says, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor of the Lord. And I thought of the analogy of a treasure hunter. A treasure hunter, he goes and he looks deep. He goes deep into the ocean, deep, deep, deep into the ocean, looking for treasure. And then another treasure hunter might go somewhere into a, a, a Egypt or another country and as an archaeologist and they'd start digging and they dig deep, 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 deep into the earth, seeking that treasure. When they find that treasure, it's usually a treasure chest and they see it and they say, oh, I found my treasure. It's beautiful. I use this analogy because as I'm seeking my treasure, which will be a woman and I'm looking and, I, and the first attraction 
is the physical attraction. I said, she's a beautiful woman. And then I thought to myself, I said, well, we can find that beauty everywhere. There's beauty all around us. For you ladies, there's handsome men. For you men, there's beautiful women. But what a treasure hunter does when he sees that treasure chest, he gets excited. But it's not because he just sees that treasure chest. He's excited because he's hoping that the most valuable and most precious gift to him in finding that treasure is what's inside of that treasure chest. So when he opens the treasure chest and he sees diamonds and rubies and pearls and all of the most valuable, precious uh, um, gems that are in that treasure chest, he knows that he has found his treasure. Well, it's that way with you brothers and sisters. Look for the inside, not the outwards appearance, but what is on the inside that will be your most valuable and precious treasure? Seek their heart. Seek what lies in their heart, for what lies in their heart is where their treasure is. Seek God in them. And I, I, I say that not lightly. Seek God in them. We easily, easily could get distracted and taken away and end up with the wrong person in your life because you did not seek the God in them. You just sought that physical attraction. You didn't even think about whether they was mentally stable or not. So your second focus point, the second key point in finding a treasure is on your husband or your wife. The third, I would say, would be your job or your career, uh, the workplace. Are you happy where you're working? Are you doing the things that God has given you as far as your natural talents? It may be as a musician, it may be as an entertainer, it may be as a doctor, a lawyer, it may be as an administrator, whatever it is that you love and you desire to do. Are you living that out? Are you doing that? Where is the treasure of your heart as far as your career, as far as the workplace? Are you happy there? Have you found that most precious gift that you desire? It's so important in your life to be happy where you work, with your career. Continue to seek, but seek God first. Remember, seek God first and he would open up doors beyond your wildest imagination. So that would be the second part of that treasure chest. You, you may have found a job, you were seeking for a job, right? And you needed a job and you found that treasure chest. You opened it up, you went to that job and you found out, wow, they're prejudiced. Uh, this job, it, it, it's crazy, it, it, it's, it's too much work, it's overflowing, I don't like it here, it, it, for whatever reason. So have you really found your treasure in that job, in that career, no matter what it is? Are you happy? Are you at peace? Internal peace? Or are you still a prisoner of your own mind because you're not living your best life? And I would say the fourth one would be in the church. Find a church home where you will walk into and you are greeted with love. You are greeted and, and respected and, and just love. That love, love covers a multitude of sins and love is God's greatest attribute. So find a church home where you will go to and it, you can honestly say this is church is unlike any other church it is precious it is valuable it is my most precious gift as far as a church home you can you have a ministry there where you can uh, uh god says he makes room for your gifts so you have a ministry where you could work out your gifts where god will use you in your gifts so allow yourself to find that perfect home. Don't give up on the church, folks. Nothing and no one is perfect. So don't give up on your church home. The spiritual vitamin that I associate this with is Matthew 6, 21. It says, for where lies your treasure, there your heart will be. But you got to remember, it says, once again, Matthew 6, 21, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. But just remember that 
before you give someone your heart, you must determine the condition of their heart. Know what's in their heart. Know what's in the heart of the people that you're working with. Know what's in the heart of the people in the church. Know what's in the heart of your husband or your wife. And we already know what's in the heart of the Lord. For God loves you unconditionally. God loves you and I love you. And once again, you have a great and wonderful day.